so I can tell where you got stuck. Um, multiply the dx. Okay, now if you multiply dx right now, you have to multiply everything by dx. So you're going to have a dx here and a dx here. And that's a problem. So I'd say don't multiply by dx yet. Yeah, I got a little bit. Confused. I'd probably add this over. And somehow I got to get these separated. So since this has an x and this has an x, you can do a GCF. Multiply the dx over and then divide both sides by y plus 5. Is that okay? But yeah, this GCF step is, I mean, not the most common, but certainly possible. Okay, and then from here, this integrates with one that we have memorized because there's no chain rule. This is integrating, just undoing power rule. Always check with derivative. Don't forget your plus C. And this one said find general solution, so we don't actually have to solve for a numerical value of C. We can just leave plus C. To get Y out of this, you need to exponentiate both sides. Um, so e to the log base e of this stuff is going to become this stuff. Again, like we talked about in the last handout, this technically, the other side could be positive or negative, um, but I'm going to show you why that doesn't matter on this type of question. Right here, when you add exponents, that's the same thing as multiplying things with the same base. And the reason why we always do that is because then this can just be changed to c. A number to an unknown power it's just a new unknown number. And then subtract the 5 over. And the reason why I don't have to worry about whether this side's positive or negative to make these absolute value signs go away, like we did on the last handout, is because this is already an unknown number. So I, I don't know. If it needs to be a positive unknown number, then great, we'll make it positive. If it needs to be negative, it needs to be negative. But we don't have enough information to solve for it anyway, so we don't really care if he's positive or negative. And even though the general solution questions are usually just a touch easier because you can't actually solve for C, which saves you a couple steps, um, it is kind of unfortunate that you don't have anything to check. If they told us this went through 0, 1, we could plug in 0, 1 to make sure that that fit our equation to know if it uh, was wrong or not. Okay, so I kind of flew through the last part. What part uh, are you most concerned about? I was just confused about how the C got multiplied with the E at the very last part. How this became this? Yeah, why would you just like simplify that? Well, again, E is just a number. Mm -hmm. So if you raise it to an unknown power, this is going to be a number, right? And it's still going to be a number we don't know, so we just always call it C. It's not the same C, but it's just a different unknown number. So okay. instead of saying times E to the C, just saying C looks cleaner, so they're always going to do that multiple choice. So you need to practice doing that okay. too. And in fact, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be doing this step. Like splitting this apart in this way is not the most common thing to do. but. I know to do it because I know this is going to change to C and they're going to expect you to do that. So, Was anybody else going to ask about 6? Want to ask something specific before I take it away?